Hello and welcome to another tutorial of MXpert. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to perform a model analysis using ANSYS APDL utilizing bin type elements. Uh, we're going to have a whole series of uh, tutorials on model analysis because it's a it's a very simple analysis from the user's stance point of view, but it's a quite complex analysis and it requires a whole lot of understanding for this purpose. So we're going to start with ANSYS APDL. We're going to create this very simple, this very simple structure. So we're going to go to modeling. We're going to create uh, an area by dimension. So it's going to be 0, 1 meter, 0, 0 0.5 on the X, 1 meter, on the Y, 0 0.5. If we look at it, you can see it here with the coordinate system. And from here, we're going to copy this structure, copy these areas at on the Z direction at 0 0.2 meters. Then keeping these two areas, we're going to create lines with L, P. We're going to create one, two, three, and four lines. After that, we are going to delete areas in below the area here. And then with A, del, comma, P, we're going to leave the top area leaving a table-like structure made with lines. So we're going to select the we're going to define the materials, the element type, the materials, the, the sections, and so on. So we're going to go to element types, add a delete, add. We're going to use bin type elements, as we said. We're going to hit OK. Close it. Then on the material properties, we're going to define a linear elastic isotropic 2.1 E11. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, we're going to consider it being of steel, 0.3 on the Poisson's coefficient and the density 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. I'm going to close that. On the sections, we're going to go to beam. I'm going to go the common sections. It's going to be a circular section, full circular section. So it's going to be 0 0.020, so 20 millimeters di uh, radius. So that's 40 millimeters diameter. It should be big enough. Once we have defined that, then we're going to go to meshing, mesh attributes, pick lines. We're going to, we can just hit all, uh, all lines, sorry, all lines. And we're going to define all the lines as material number one, type real, we don't have any defined, type one, section number one. We did do that. And then we're going to do L mesh comma all. We're going to check on the result with the E shape e-shape uh, command and as you can see we have a bin type element table like structure that we're going to use for the simulation of the model characteristics we're going to deactivate the e-shape uh, so it's going to be zero zero we go back to if we look at elements we're going to see it like that if we look at lines we're going to see it like that <coughs> So we're going to go to solutions, new analysis, model analysis, and then on analysis options, there's a lot of different solvers or extraction modes. This, the block lenses is the most common. Uh, any structure has an infinite number of modes. These modes are determined by their stiffness characteristics and the vibrations and how the how the waves propagate among them. It's a quite complex uh, process. It's very simple to simulate very, it's not that simple to understand, especially with complex structures. But uh, as for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to ask to extract 10 modes. And we're going to expand those 10 modes, 10 modes, it it, it has to be defined where are those 10 modes. If we're looking for the first 10 modes, we can just keep this at zero and zero, or we can go to zero to 1000. So that would be Hertz. So we're looking for the first 10 modes between zero Hertz and a thousand. As we said, there's an infinite number of modes, at least theoretically, and, well, in fact, there is an infinite number of modes. So if we need the 10 first modes from 10,000 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz, we just put those values and the, the program will calculate them for us. We're going to normalize the mode shapes to the mass matrix. We're not going to touch anything there. And later tutorials, we might explain these options. We're going to hit OK. We don't have any 
we don't have any restrictions, uh, these simulations would be like the, the least restricted. This would be like if we have the structure floating on the air, maybe in space, or if we have it under very, very thin wires and we hit it with something or we put it to vibrate, this structure will give its own behavior uh, according to the vibrations. How the waves will propagate will determine a certain shape. So we're going to go now to uh, solve this model. So, so solve is going to give us a warning because of the restrictions and the solution is done. When we go to general post-processing, if we go to read results and we list the results by pick, we're going to see that we, first of all, we have the first six frequencies are zero or very closely to zero. These correspond to rigid body um, movements. So this would be displacements and rotations along all of the axes. And in fact, the first mode of this structure is 62 and it corresponds to the seventh mode. So we actually only have four modes. So we're gonna read this and we're gonna plot the displacement. PLNL sol u sum. As you can see, this um, this is uh, this has presents a weird shape. We're gonna activate its shape so you can see it better. No, sorry, with it, with the model analysis, it wouldn't it wouldn't work. I forgot. So we're gonna go back to this. So what this is telling us is that this structure, is 62.5821 uh, hertz, it bends. It would bend under. It would have this shape. It would bend in this way. And the model analysis require making videos, analyzing the videos in most of the situations. Uh, these values are not corresponding to the reality. Therefore, it could be, but it could not be. Sometimes you might have here 17 meters on a structure that uh, has one meter length. They, the, this is not realistic. What you need to obtain, what are you going to obtain from a model analysis are the frequency and the mode shape. How is the structure deforming and at what frequency? So we're gonna go here to animate, plot controls, animate, and we're gonna go to, we can do the mode shape or over time, deform shape, we're gonna do the mode shape. So the frames to create, if you put more, it's gonna be more, more fluent. If you just put uh, less, it's gonna be jumping more. And we're gonna do the, summation displacement summation plot so we can see some colors we're going to hit okay the program is going to calculate and as you can see with we can change the delay a little bit so it's faster or slower the structure it's deforming it's taking a certain shape and you can see how it would be deforming under this frequency at this frequency it would be doing that no matter what no matter how the force it's introduced if as long as we have a force an acceleration or something that is at 60.62.58 hertz this is a structure this tubular structure that we have will start doing this we're going to go to the next set and we're going to plot the result and we're going to do again the same thing anime the mode shape now we hit okay and as you can see our structure we need to do a little bit faster our structure it's deforming again in a different way normally in most of the cases these are periods of sinuses the shapes are like half a sinus or two sinuses or three sinuses we're going to look at the next set 97 and on different directions so at 97 hertz this structure will tend to behave like this. It will try to do that unless we restrict it and change its characteristics. This is what we normally do at that, at that frequency. So we're gonna change the delay a little bit so it goes faster. And as you can see, this structure has, uh, it will have this shape, which is half of sinus period. And um, there's other values and other things, other data that the, the, the model analysis provide, but those have to be an, interpreted in a more complex way. So for today, this is going to be the end of the tutorial. You can try changing the frequencies 
and other things. The, the simulations are quite simple as long as the structure is properly done and you have some understanding and some knowledge of what's, uh, what's happening. So we'll thank you very much for watching these tutorials. If please subscribe and like the hit the like button if you enjoy our tutorials. And thank you very much.